Welcome to the Property Renovation Podcast. For anyone who loves renovation, wants to save money, and to learn the best tips and tricks of the industry. And now, your host, three times award winner of leading renovation website, House, and over 15 years in the industry, renovating just over 200 properties, James Woodham. Hello and welcome to the Property Renovation Podcast. This is our second episode and um, we hope you enjoyed the first episode. But um, yeah, well, renovating a property can be both exciting and scary experience to go through. And what we're here for is we're here to discover the topic of renovation in a different way, provide you with knowledge, tips, tricks of the industry and We do that by speaking to building contractors, designers, architects, and most importantly, members of the public. And this could be um, from someone that's done a project before or someone that's thinking about doing a project. And this will end up giving you like an insight of what their ideas and concerns are. Every episode should benefit you, but if there is any topic that you want us to talk about, then get in touch. Follow us on Facebook uh, by subscribing to our group And by doing that, you go to uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the property renovation podcast. Now, um, make sure you share it and spread the word. We'd like to uh, help many, 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 many more people out there. So spread the word. Subscribe to us on uh, iTunes as well, the property renovation podcast. Now, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, On this episode, episode two we're going to be discussing about how you find a good contractor or a good building company. Um, and last week we spoke about um, contracts and uh, why you should have a contract um, when hiring a building company, what to do, uh, how to read it, how to understand it, what their terms and conditions need to cover, um, all sorts of things. So go back and listen to episode one if you haven't heard it already. And um, right, we'll just move on to episode two. So finding a good contractor. Where can you find a good contractor? These days, um, well, years ago, you used to, before the internet, be able to find them um, in the yellow pages, good old yellow pages. You used to just get that big thick book and um, have a look through. There used to be a load of advertisements in there. Or you'd be getting the local newspaper. um, And in the classified ads, you'd be able to find someone on there. Um, but these days, it's much, much easier to find a contractor um, and they can't go in hiding. All their reviews are everywhere. Um, but you are kind of spoiled for choice in a way. And um, they're, they're everywhere. I mean, there's a, few, there's a few places that you can find them. And um, these can be uh, websites. So you could just type in um, your area and um, what you are looking for in a building company and um, up pops a load of options for you, um, all from around your area. And um, these building companies would probably pay to advertise and make sure that they can be seen in your area so that they can offer their services. Um, But uh, yeah, have a look through them. Um, Check out the websites, make sure that um, they they seem to be up to date and that they've got some good images that that, that, that can really make you uh, help you make that choice in choosing them. Um, also, um, it make sure it's not too. Um, I was going to say not too flashy, but like make sure it's not too fake looking. Um, you know, you've got these really good um, images that you can get from the internet and pretend that they're yours. Um, and they look absolutely perfect. But what you need to be looking for is, um, well, what would be helpful is to find some images that show you before the works have started, maybe midway through, and then what the end result is, because that really gets you to see what that building company is capable of and um, fills you with confidence because you know that it's, it's more than likely a legit project that they've done. Other ways that you can find them is through recommendations, general old recommendations. Um, You could speak to uh, 
family members, you could speak to people in your work, um, and uh, nine times out of ten, someone has had some renovation works done. So they would just literally um, say, "Yeah, uh, I'll I'll get you his number or um, get get you their number, and um, off you go." And um, that's one way. Um, the other another way is to just uh, go onto social media. Um, a lot of building companies are using social media a lot these days where you can um, uh, follow their pages and you can see more activity and what they're doing and what they're up to. Um, and and it's, a, it's a really good way of finding out um, a bit more about that building company because they get to add their... Um, their personality to to their to their social media pages. They can add a bit more information about the projects and start to add hashtags and um, to, uh, to comment about their own uh, experiences when they were doing that project. So it's a it's a lot more fun way of finding um, a renovation company in that way. Um, you have got which popped up around about. Um, five or six years ago, but maybe a bit longer, but they're called lead generation websites. Um, and there's a few out there, just to name a few, you've got My Builder, My Hammer, you've got um, uh, My we, we Work or something like that. And you go to these um, pages and it, you can literally just post a job Post your where you, where the where the where the job is, and then you just sit back and you wait for the responses, and you will get tons of building contractors that are interested in the work, providing that you've written enough detail, you've provided some images, um, and you've given a good description as to what you're what you're out there, what you're after, and. Um, yeah, you, you just get a lot of interest and then you can pick of the bunch, really. You can literally just go through um, and you can see, look, check out their profiles. You can look at uh, the reviews they've got, previous uh, photos of uh, previous work that they've done. Um, you can even check out their insurance because they have to put their insurance on the, some of the websites. So you can really start to understand um, if, if they're the person that is like offering to do the job for you, whether they're good or not. Um, and at the same time, at the end, you can leave feedback. So um, if they've done a good job, you can say that they've done a good job. And then everyone else that wants to pick that person or that building company, um, they can see that feedback and they can see all the others too. So um, it's a really, really good way for building companies to, to build much more of a presence um, and uh, it exploded over uh, uh, over the past few years because it's it gives them a way to um, explore a larger area to do their work in, um, and they can literally build a profile. They can rely on clients to leave reviews. It's really, really, really good. I mean, it can be really bad too because um, once there is a bad review. Um, it almost is a, it's, it's quite a heavy blow to a building company and um, it's much more difficult um, to, to, to get someone else to trust you after that point uh, because like us all, we, we, we would go on and we, we would see maybe 10 previous good reviews and then one bad review and that kind of sticks in our mind and that's it. We don't want to go any further so we look for the next person down the line. Um, the only unfortunate part of lead generation websites, um, in, in my opinion, is that you, um, customers might not know, but you, you actually, uh, when you put the job out, it doesn't cost you a penny, um, but it actually costs the building companies money to uh, get in touch with you and to get your contact details. And uh, you probably would say that that's fair, but um, if you're shortlisting five people, then uh, a building company is, you know, the way that they look at it is that, that they've got a one in five time chance uh, to get the job. And that probably, that means that you're, you're, you're getting some good uh, contractors applying, but you, you, you're probably missing out as well. So the way that you can really help get the right people applying to do your work 
is to make sure that you give them all of the information that they need to make sure they understand if it, they can weigh it up. They can gamble to see whether it's a really good job, worthwhile uh, paying like a lead fee uh, to get your contact details for. And um, the way that you do that is just by giving plenty of information. Um, give, let, let them understand if you've got a budget, um, then, then roughly what your budget is. Very People are reluctant to say how much they are willing to spend on a project, but for any building company to really understand you, they need to understand that you understand um, what a project, what, what you're willing to invest in that project. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna hit at the highest figure for the quote just because they know that that's what you're willing to spend, but they need to know that you're realistic. You don't go down the shop and um, you know, think that you can buy a pair of shoes for 10 pounds because that's your budget and the shoes end up being 100 pounds. You already know, you're familiar with those prices and what to expect those shoes to cost. So it's the same thing with building. You know, um, you can spend some time on a website, uh, on on a, on um, on any on any website, and you can just type in renovation for a bathroom, and you can get some indicative costs. You roughly know that a, a bathroom would probably cost between anything to three to five thousand pounds. So, you know, that's what you want to do. You want to be able to, um, so yeah. Um, Finding them on, uh, giving, giving the right information out there is, is the best thing that you can do. So don't be afraid, just uh, give all of the information you need, show some uh, existing images of the property, uh, give some images of maybe um, pictures online that you've seen of styles that you like. And uh, the more information uh, that you put out there, the better interest that you're gonna get and the more accurate those quotes are gonna cost. So, um, Anyway, that's, that's the way to find um, a good contractor out there. Um, then if what you, once you've selected a few, maybe you've now narrowed it down and you've got three uh, really good contractors and, and you want to uh, shortlist um, one of them out of those three to do the job, um, there's a few things that you just need to consider and you need to just go through this process. So um, first of all, you need to make sure that they've got the right amount of um, insurance. So uh, you would check the value of your house. You would um, uh, then have a look at their public liability and make sure that they are covered for a minim minimum of one million. Um, if it's a limited company, um, I'm pretty sure it's uh, five million now that they have to be covered for. So um, check out their insurance, make sure that they are insured for the exact work that they're gonna be doing in your property and ask, for, don't be afraid, ask for a copy of their insurance um, and then you can have a look at it yourself. Um, then have a look to make sure that they've got a contract. We spoke about this in episode one, so make sure that you see a copy of the, their um, general contract that they send out to customers um, with a copy of their terms and conditions as well. And then you want to see uh, photos of um, some previous work that they've done already. Um, if you haven't found them uh, on a lead generation site or their own website where you can see the photos in the first place. Um, and then uh, ask if you can get a couple of references, references from um, people that they've worked for before. Now, they will probably give you two or three. Make sure you call all three or, or all two of them because I've, we've heard that a couple of people just call one, they hear that that was an amazing review and um, don't bother calling the next ones. And that's the biggest mistake. Make sure you call all of the references and ask um, the right questions, uh, which is gonna be coming up in an episode soon. So we will be letting you know the right questions to ask um, to get a good reference of a building company. Um, but then the next thing to do is go and physically see a live project, so something that they've been that they're, they're working on at the moment. Go and see them, um, see what their work is like, see um, how they work, and uh, and if you feel that their health and safety is up to standard as well. 
because sometimes that's that's quite interesting. You can go there and you can get a really good insight as to whether they're clean and tidy and whether they're you know dressed appropriately to do that kind of work. So you get a real good understanding of um, of that building company. And once you've done that, then you can uh, then you're ready. Then you're ready to hire them. And um, I think the best thing to do is just have once you're ready to hire them write it in an email, send it over to them and um, confirm it. But that's it. So that concludes for today's episode. And um, don't forget, share us on Facebook. If you go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash property renovation podcast, you can opt to subscribe to our group. And in there, we talk all about um, renovation, Um, We've got architects adding their opinions, designers, uh, building contractors, all in there um, speaking about renovations and giving you hints, tips, tricks of um, how to achieve the the most perfect renovation. So um, thank you very much and um, listen out for the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes to the Property Renovation Podcast. Thank you very much.